you. This young lady is a, a daughter to Pastor Stephen Me. She and her husband are like a son and a daughter to us. And we've been seeing faith grow in them for many, many years. And I'll tell you what, it is rewarding to see God do the supernatural. When you've been sowing your life into people and then to see the word manifest, what a blessing that is. So would you help me welcome Pastor Leba. Yeah. Pastor Leba Mowbray. She has a miracle testimony that we're going to share about in the next few minutes. And um, God's going to do some miraculous things in many, many people's lives. We have our faith out there for thousands and thousands of people Amen. to be set free because of what God Amen. has done in this young lady's life. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pastor Leba just went through a double lung transplant surgery. It has been a six-year battle, Pastor Leba. Yes. Six years. Six years we've been on a search to find out what the problem was, medically, what was wrong. Yes. I mean, many, many doctors misdiagnosed. Yeah. Yes. We didn't know what the approach was, so we had to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes. We finally got a determination, and the doctors said you needed a double lung transplant surgery or else you were going to die. Yes. And we had to believe God for many, many things. Oh, yes. They put you on a donor list, <clears throat> and we had to pray in the Holy Ghost to get good lungs, yes. the right lungs. Yes. Now, talk about this, because you have a, spe a special blood type. I do. I'm an O negative, which means I can give to everybody, but I can only receive an O negative. So my blood type was a very big challenge right off the bat um, because that's, it's a very limited supply. Um, so that was our first hurdle. The second is you have to go through all kinds of body imaging and scanning. They scan the whole diaphragm to make sure the lung is deep enough and they get the measurements for the width and, and everything um, so that your lungs go in properly and, and you don't, they're not extended. They have to fit into the cavity properly. Um, there's just lots of factors that have to go into it. And so you think, oh, yay, I passed this hurdle. And you realize we have another one yet to, to come over. And you have over. a small rib cage like me. I do. And because of that, these lungs had to be smaller. They do. Um, so they were, which was horribly sad. Um, they came in, and I was told at that point it had to be a very small woman or a child um, to fit into my cavity. That is sad. And it, it, it was, it, because nobody wants to see a, a child, nobody wants to see anybody die, um, but especially a child who has their whole life ahead of them. Now, you told me earlier you were praying for the family. I did. That was going to be donating the lungs without even, you know, we still don't know. But you began to pray months ahead of this. I Tell did. About when that. we, um, when I was told after Christmas, I went in, and at that point I was told I was not leaving the hospital. I had to have the transplant, period. And so um, the Lord immediately dropped in my spirit that that was um, the moment when I had to begin to pray for the family, mm -hmm. um, peace for their family, and, and for salvation for my donor. Yes. Um, and I was, I was very adamant. I was like, Lord, I, I don't want to wait, <laughs> um, but I will wait because their salvation is so important to me. I want to be able to say thank you yes. one day when I get to heaven. I want to be able to look them in the face. That's, that's so important to me. Amen. And you went into the hospital, as you said, at the end of December. I did. And they told you, you're not leaving without this transplant. And so weeks go by, you know, weeks go by, and yes. we're believing for the right donor. We're praying for the donor. And I went in to see you. And we've got a picture of you and me in there. Of course, this is during COVID, people. In the middle of a pandemic, we're believing for lungs in a transplant surgery. And I was in the hospital visiting you one of the many times. And this particular time, this is in February, I looked at you, and I'm sitting across from you, and I, I saw the spirit of death on you. I saw that spirit. Now, as a pastor, I've seen it many times. I've been with many people who have left this earth and gone. 
And thank God most of the people I've been with have been born again. Yeah. And that's a good experience yeah. to know they, they left their body and yes. they're with the Lord. Amen. They're in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I saw it on you. And I'm thinking in my mind, God... How do we prepare for this? We're, we're not prepared for her to die. No. We're prepared for her to get lungs and live. And she looks like she's dying. And I'm thinking in my mind, how do I prepare our church for this? Yeah. Because we've been full of faith and we've been believing God. And you told me you saw that on my face. I did. Now pick it up from there. I did. Um, weeks, pr about a week prior to the, these photos that you're starting to see, um, they had come in and shared with me that my heart, had com the right side of my heart had completely collapsed at that point. I was in complete heart failure and they had me on machines. They had started running dialysis and all kinds of different things for my kidneys, um, but they had started running, my husband thinks this is hysterical, um, nitrous oxide, which is what they run high speed motor cars with. Um, but they were running it. They actually put a catheter right into my heart. and they Directly were, into your heart. And they were running it right directly into my heart to keep me alive at this point. And so... Um, and that's the only thing that kept you alive. And they were very... My doc... I, I'll share a little bit about this in a moment, but I'm telling you what, I had the best medical team yeah. God could have ever given. Um, they were very, very slow to say anything negative. Um, but they had to start preparing me that I was not going to make it. Um, all yeah. the way up to the very moment they shared with me that okay. I was not going to make it. S tell what you, when you saw that on my face, when, what did you say to me? When Pastor Cheryl came in, um, she was very positive and loving and sat and prayed with me. And um, she never led on at all. But I've been very blessed to get to work under her for many years. And I saw her face and I knew. I knew exactly what she was thinking. I could see it, and the Lord began to prepare me. And immediately, out of my mouth, I told her, I am not going to die. Come on. And she said, well, what if you do go home? I mean, and she, the Lord had given her some amazing scriptures that, that truly blessed my life. Um, but I told her, I, this is all well and good. And I pushed it back to her. I said, I'm not dying. I'm not going anywhere. I have a vision. I have a purpose. There is a plan still in place for me. We have not even stepped into our area of ministry yet. And I said, I am not dying. And you said, I am believing God for the lungs to come. Yes. I said, I get in agreement with you. Yes. And it was so neat. Um, the, wind, the room that I had, um, my room actually backed up to where the main helicopter pad was. And so I would see the helicopter lift and land, lift and land, a hundred times a day. And I finally asked one of the nurses, I said, are, are those patients being flown in or out or what is that? And she shared with me that there's two of them. There's a red one and a black one. And when the red one leaves, it is because the doctor is flying out to go look at an organ and bring it back to wow. you. Wow. And so every time I'd see the red one leave, I was like, Lord, it's I thank you. Yes. It's, it's mine or it's somebody else's and we just bless it. Lord, we just, it's gonna, they're going to live and not die. Now talk about Advent Hospital. It's a Seventh-day Adventist yes. hospital, so they're full of faith. They All are. their screensavers in the hospital say scriptures of healing. Talk about your team. We're going to show some pictures of your medical team there. Well, praise God, they don't have good television in there. So <laughs> we had um, brought in my iPad and different things, and we had the Victory Network just playing, looping constantly. Um, and if it wasn't that, it was my phone. Um, my girls had done a complete playlist of worship music, and it just went nonstop, 24-7 in my room. Um, my daughters had come in and plastered the scripture, the word, all over the windows, the big glass windows. I had photos everywhere. My nurses would come in and begin to pray. They knew my room was a place that was holy. That's and, right. And they prayed. Um, my, the, the lady that cleaned, she would come in every day and she'd sing and she'd pray over me and she'd get in agreement with me on how today is, what's going on. And um, my doctors, even though I, I know some of them weren't believers, 
they stood with me every step of the way. Every time I'd say, listen, I'm healed, they'd say, okay, we okay. agree with you. And it took an army of them just they to did. take you to get examined or to have a test done. Yes. They had to roll up. Do you see that? If you put that picture on the screen, see that battery of machines next to her? It took several people just to manage that, plus her bed, just to get her down the hall. There were two of those towers. Um, yeah. One of the photos is a little bit different. It's, it's um, a little more packed. There was 27 of those um, fluid bags actually going in, and it was duplicated on the other side. Um, so there was over 50 medications at one wow. time wow. coming in. Um, <laughs> And at this point, I, I was not doing well with them. Um, and because there was so many of them, they didn't know which ones were affecting me. Um, at this point, I'd quit eating. I hadn't eaten in almost three weeks here at this point. Wow. And um, it, was, it was really something. OK, right now, I'm about to put something on the screen that may not be appropriate for young children. So if uh, parents, if you're watching online, and uh, you have children with you, you may not want them to see this because it's, okay. it's kind of gory. But it's important to see because it, it, it expresses the miracle yeah. that God did for you. This is the old lungs yes. and the new lungs that came. Yes. The old lungs were so diseased. You can understand now why the doctor said you will not live. They were so diseased at that point when I actually went into surgery. Um, the procedure is between a five and a six hour procedure. I was in surgery for over nine and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And um, they had to, and, and I do apologize, this is graphic, but they had embedded so far into the cavity that they had to scrape the cavity to remove the old ones to even be able to put the new ones in. And that's why it took you so much longer to heal. Yes. Because they had to literally cut her old lungs away yes. from her body. Yes. It's, it, it's, it's just really something. But now talk to us. We got the call a few days later after I was in the hospital room with you. I remember leaving the hospital room, going out to the parking lot to get in my car, and I was bawling. And I said, God, we, we have to have those lungs. We have to have a miracle. And I was crying, and, and I got home, and I told Pastor Steve, she's going to die if we don't get these lungs. We have, to, we have to increase the prayer because she has to have those lungs. And just a few days after that, on a Saturday afternoon, Pastor Andrew called us and said, we got them. Yes. We got the lungs. Yes. They're, they're coming, and we're going into surgery tonight. And you were in surgery most of the night, late into Saturday night, even into Sunday morning service, we still didn't know the outcome. No. And you were touch and go yes. for a long time. Talk about that. Um, when, and, and I want to kind of back up a little bit. Um, when I was actually in the hospital, um, things were smooth. I was on the transplant list. We were moving forward. And out of the blue, this is just like the devil, um, I was attacked with a sickness. Something had happened, and it put me in the ICU for three weeks. They pulled me off the transplant list at that point, yeah. and it was devastating. Um, and I was like, Lord, <laughs> for real? Um, we've gone through all this, and this is how this is going to end? No, this is not how this is right. going to end. Right. And um, so we, I was, like I said, there for three weeks in the ICU. Things got better. Um, my doctor came in and said, we're putting you back on transplant. And within seven days, my donor came in Praise on a Saturday. Praise like I said, at this point, I hadn't eaten in weeks. I, was, I didn't care about eating. Um, I, I, just, I was so nauseous and sick. And when you came out of surgery, they had told you that they would be waking you up the next day. And they, were going, they planned to get you up and walking. But you didn't, didn't happen. wake up for days. <laughs> three and, weeks. They yes, had me days sedated. and days and days. Yes, three weeks. And we just kept believing God. Yes. She's going to wake up. They're going to bring her out of this, and she's going to heal. Yes. Amen. And it was touch and go. It was. Um, the night that we finally, it was a Saturday, um, Saturday, February 6th, that um, I got. They immediately call you the donor or the recipient. Um, immediately. You're the very first person of contact. 
And so they contacted me, and um, I had prior to this called my husband and begged him. Now, like I said, I wasn't eating. Mm -hmm. I said, please, please bring me a pizza from my, there, I have this really favorite little place in where we live. <laughs> I said, please, and he said, honey, you are not gonna eat that. And I said, please, <laughs> and he said, honey, I'm going to be there tomorrow for church. I'll bring it tomorrow. And I said, no. And immediately I started to cry. <laughs> He's like, I'm on my way. <laughs> so he comes, and in the middle of this is when I got the call. And so um, he got there. I shared with him. And they immediately, within an hour or so, um, you'll see a lot of those photos where there's nurses everywhere. Um, that's when they came in. And I had to actually sign consent forms for my new lungs and all the waivers for the, the, um, the surgery. Um, my surgeon actually came up, and that's when I met him for the actual first time. And um, I'd met all the other team, but he had not had the privilege of meeting. Um, and so, like I said, we um, started all the procedure and all the long... I, I, you know, when it started, I thought, this is going to go fast. And we're, I was so excited at this point. There was no fear. There was no fear. There was I, excitement. I, I couldn't get this done fast enough. Yeah. Um, and so I... Um, I, like I said, we'd signed everything, done everything, and my daughter, my young, my oldest was at ORU, that's where she was at college, and um, so she was on the iPad, and she was talking FaceTime with us that way, and my youngest climbed into bed with me and began to sing and worship over me, and that's how we spent the last three hours before I actually went Perfect. to surgery. Perfect. And um, Perfect. we got down there, um, the anesthesiologist, this was the only negative moment of the entire thing. Um, the anesthesiologist said, I want you to say goodbye to your family. And I said, I will not say goodbye to Thank my family. Thank you. And he said, your daughter deserves that. And I said, my, my daughter is going to see me on the flip side of this. Thank you. And so um, my husband and my daughter kissed me goodbye. And I have to tell you, I do not remember a thing. No. I do not remember going through the doors. I do not remember seeing the team. God was so gracious. Um, there, like I said, there was no fear. There was And when nothing. you finally woke up, you thought it was the next day. <laughs> I did. Three weeks later, uh -huh. and um, I couldn't tell you my name. Um, as a matter of fact, this is, this is how cool God is. Uh, my surgery actually started at 1201 Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> so I have um, Lung Warriors Super, Super Bowl t-shirts that my husband had made for me. But um, we... Uh, we just, like I said, as we went through everything, it just... You got over the hurdle. We did. Uh, of the serious, the crisis of we it. We did. And then you started to improve rapidly. Yes. Really well. And then finally, you got sent home. Yes. That was the day. And here is a picture of all the medical team at Advent Hospital saying goodbye to Liba. And the first place... Andrew and Liba came was to our condo, and we met them down front. It was very emotional. We were all crying oh, and just all rejoicing and praising God it was. that Liba's going home. I Amen. Didn't, I didn't think that day was going to come. I thought I'd moved into Advent Health. Yeah. Praise God. But months later, you're we on did. your way home, and here you are you at home. your front lawn. <laughs> Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Hallelujah. And what you don't see is our neighbors were actually out there and they were all cheering us yes, on yes. because they had walked some of the journey with us. They knew what was going on. Well, I want you to talk about your journey. I want you to <clears throat> back up a little bit now. We've told the story, but let's back up and let's talk about six years ago. What, are, what were some of the symptoms you were experiencing? Um, this, as I said, this started six years ago and it was really odd. Um, because the very first thing that happened to me is I ended up getting what they thought was muscular um, damage, like nerve damage in my arm and through my hand. And they actually went ahead and did surgery on my arm and my hand. And it did resolve some of the problem. Um, however, had they caught it, the different things that had started then, we may not have come quite to where we are today. Um, through this, um, we had gone to Texas for Christmas one year. It was about a year after this surgery, and I, um, the last few days, I ended up getting sick. And Andrew said, let's, let's go. I'll take you to the hospital, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, no, I'll see my doctor when we get home. I'm sure I'm fine. Let's just enjoy the rest of our vacation. Um, by the time we got home, I had pneumonia, and it turned into bronchitis. 
and that happened four more times through that year. So a total of five times. October of that year, it was 2007, or excuse me, 2017, we had Barry Tubbs right. ministering that morning, and it was, the energy in here was amazing, yes. and it was um, so much going on. And I sat in the front row, and, and within minutes, I could feel my lungs just shutting down. I mean, closing in on me, and I began to sweat <laughs> something fierce. My heart was pounding. And so I excused myself, went to my office, and, um, and, and just began to pray through it. I had responsibilities that day, and I was not going home. I was not giving up. We were going to pursue. We were going to press through this. Um, by the time we got home that night, um, the pain was so incredible. Um, I had, it, the symptoms had just progressively gotten worse. So my husband took me in and um, they run what's called an arterial, they run through your arterial vein and they check your oxygen. And my oxygen at that point was 48% was running through my veins. Wow. They immediately admitted me. And that landed me a nice week in the hospital in my hometown. Oops, excuse me. And um, we, ended up seeing an amazing doctor. He actually was a cardiologist because my heart was what started showing the symptoms first. And so he went through diagnostics, a week of, like I said, just crazy stuff. And he decided at this point that I had to see a specialist, that he was not going to be able to help me. This was beyond his scope um, because he was noticing all these lung issues on top of it. So at this point, they did a lung biopsy and the surgeon that did the biopsy was like, well, you know, it's kind of got some fibrosis, but I think you'll be okay, and kind of just shelved it. And, yeah. With four cases of bronchitis in one year? I don't think so. So he just shelved it, and um, it, it didn't settle well with me. No. And, and this cardiologist, it did not settle well no. with. No. So we scheduled the appointment to see him, uh, the specialist here in Orlando in January is when he could see me. By November, I was so sick, they decided they would airlift me from Daytona to Orlando. And I said, no, 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 we'll drive. And um, so we did, we drove. The doctor actually met me in the lobby. They had a room, they admitted me immediately. And I was there for 12 days at the hospital. Yes. We went through extensive oh, testing, it was crazy. Now, I have never been sick a day in my life. I am. Um, minor sniffles and you know things like that but as far as sick I've never been sick and so um, when he sat down the doctor came in that night and sat down and said listen we need to we need to talk in length about what's getting ready to happen and I said yeah I'm going home and he said no you're not and he said you have extensive fibrosis in the lung he said it is so damaged on the left side I'm not sure how you're breathing he said the diagnosis um, went on for, I, I, there's numerous things, there's an autoimmune issue that had set in that actually was what attacked the lungs. Uh, there is pulmonary hypertension, which is the exchange of oxygen and blood to the heart and lung. It was not working properly. Those ventricles had begun to shut down. Um, a thyroid issue had set in. Now, and, you're not an old woman, are you? No, I was, and when I was diagnosed, I was 41. Look at this beautiful young woman. The devil tried to kill her. A beautiful young woman. You would think somebody elderly would have these issues, but she's a young woman. And I tell you, that's really the grace of God in, in that respect because my doctors kept saying the very same thing, and it motivated people to move on my behalf. And do things they would not ordinarily do. They would give up. Yeah. Because at one point you were told you needed not only a double lung transplant, you needed the heart transplant as well. Yes. But then later they said, no, we believe that once the lungs are restored yes. and oxygen gets to your heart, your heart will heal itself. Yes. Because God created our yes. bodies to heal themselves. Yes. Yeah. And, um, when the diagnosis came down, um, the specialist that I was seeing, uh, just a, a God-given man put yeah. in my life yeah. in that season. And I don't know if you have a picture of him. He's, um, he's amazing. I, I headed up there earlier. But um, he walked with me through this. He's walked with me the last six years through this journey, really. And he put me through case study on a trial drug to try to see if that would activate things. I mean, he has just been there every step of the way. 
finally he said, we have to go through with transplant. And that immediately, I allowed fear, immediately. And it, it stopped everything. Everything that was in motion for me stopped at this very moment. Because of fear. Because of fear. And the things that were attacking me became so bad. Um, it came to a point where um, we were getting second uh, opinions to make sure that I wasn't just reacting out of, uh, out of fear. Um, but every diagnosis came back that this is what we had to do. And you were in pain every day, every moment of every day. Yes. You were in pain. The pain became oh. so bad. Um, I wasn't able to walk. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't dress myself. Um, I would have to wait till my husband came home from work to use the restroom because I couldn't get out of bed to, to help myself. It became that bad. Um, and so we had a doctor begin to prescribe a medication that's as bad as chemotherapy, <laughs> but it stopped that pain. And I have to tell you, um, I am not an endorser of medication. I believe God is our healer. But at that moment, there was such relief in that moment that I could clear my brain and begin to think what was our next steps? What were, what were we going to do? That's so true because when you're in the pain of the moment, you can't think. That's why it's important that you have the word in yes. you. Now, yes. for time's sake, let's, yes. let's move on because praise God you got through all of yes. that. And then, and then this past December, 2020, at the end of December, you were finally admitted to the hospital, yes. and the doctor said, you're not going home. No. Um, through January, well, it, it started about a year prior, but January, or excuse me, November um, through December, what would happen is, because my heart was no longer working um, at this point, and I didn't realize it, um, it would allow fluid to build up, and my stomach would become huge. And they would have to go in and yes. remove between. I purposely didn't put that picture up it, there because I didn't want to show that. <laughs> it's really gross. Um, we girls do have our. Yeah. But they would pull between three and four liters of fluid from my stomach. Yes. And it's within, like you looked pregnant. It did. And within 45 minutes, I would be normal again. But the pressure was so great on my yeah. heart that it just kept propelling in and making it worse. Now, let's talk about some steps you went through because. Your product of Word of Faith Ministries yes. and teaching. Yes. And, and you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You've always been a worshiper, always been strong in the word. But you were put to the test. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Your whole family, the whole church was absolutely put to a test. Yes. And you sent me some bullet points of steps you went through. So I want to go through those. The first one was obedience you told me this was the key thing for you was obedience let's talk about that it is um, for me and I'll kind of run all over the place here but um, for me the obedience factor was so many points through the journey um, they sent me to a, a really amazing medical research hospital to actually do the procedure and that once we got done with all the diagnostic work the end result was not what I wanted so Honestly, I, I rejected the, tr the transplant there because of the way things came across for me. You said no. I said no. And because you were listening to the Holy Spirit. Look at, look at this scripture here. Deuteronomy 28.2 in the NIV says, All these yes. blessings will come on you yes. and accompany you. Uh, King James says, overtake you. If you obey the Lord your God. How do we obey? We hear the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we obey. And he was speaking to you, right? Yes. And through that obedience, it brought the right surgical team for me. Yep. It brought my doctors. And one of my doctors, um, she's the head of transplant, will be with me the rest of my life. Right. And um, she's amazing. Uh, a God-fearing woman. And, but because of that obedience, it brought all the pieces in line. I got to have the surgery where I wanted right here in Orlando. Close to I home. got to be with my family. Yep. Um, all the pieces were there. The provision. Um, God has brought a miraculous financial provision through this. Yeah. Um, this procedure. Talk about that for a minute because during all this mess the last six years, you guys lost your business. We did. You lost your uh, medical we did. insurance. We did. We had a thriving business in Daytona. And um, the season had just ended, and we shut the doors. And with it, 
like Pastor Cheryl said, went our finances, went our medical insurance. Um, will you try to change, you know, doing a procedure like this with changing your insurance? They don't like it. And um, a lot of crazy things happen. And so God had to provide new medical insurance, and he, he did. did. He did. Fantastic insurance. And people insurance. gave. They and did. I just want to say quickly, oh. uh, people gave generously Sacrifices. to this family. Many, many sacrifices yes. to help get them through. Not just to, to help cover their own personal expenses, no. <laughs> but well beyond all that. And thank you, thank you, yes. thank you to everybody Absolutely. who sowed into this precious life because it's a life worth saving. Amen. And then your second thing you told me about was your surroundings. Yes. Um, once again, and that stems out of the obedience. I was in the right place at the right time. And having the people that surrounded me, having our pastors there, um, having my family there, and, and there was a lot of opportunity to have other people around me, and I declined. Because who you surround yourself with in a time like that is vital. I mean, the words that are coming out, we had one nurse that, God bless her, she, she actually, it really cracked me up. We were in, the hospital and doing everything. She came in one day and she said, oh, the aura in here. And of course, we just cracked up laughing because it was not the aura. It was totally the anointing. Um, Amen. But she was removed. My nurse heard her say it. She didn't like it and had her removed. And that was the way everything went. It, it was just God had, had all my steps ordered. Well, Second Peter 1.1 1, 1 in the King James says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. We have taught that here at Word of Faith. It is very important to be around people of like precious faith. Yes. And here is a picture of that female doctor that you were talking about. Yes. She's in a mask. Right next, everybody is next to you. She's as young as you. She is. We we have a the same birthday. She's um, two weeks apart from See? my birthday. See, uh, look at that. And she she's, was she's a, such a blessing. I just yeah. love her. She is amazing. And your family was there. Your church family was there for you. Look at all these pictures of people that were there. Um, here's uh, Andrew. Talk about how Andrew would be there even when you were unconscious. Andrew was there praying, speaking the word, talking faith yes. over you. The girls were there, right? An another moment of just true obedience, us standing our ground. Um, he's a teacher um, through the, the school year. He's at a school where our girls attend and everything. And they ended up, um, because he's only got so many days that he can take, and, of course, we were right during the middle of his school season, every one of the teachers gave up all of their vacation time so that he could be in the hospital the entire three Isn't months with me. Isn't that wonderful? So he was there every single day. And um, there was that moment where you saw him bending over me. Um, I, he actually came in uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. And yeah. the nurse said, oh, look. Is that he, that nose? Who put that nose on your face? It's actually, um, it's actually a sensor. Oh. <laughs> And it tested my O2, but for some reason it would light up red like that. And so every photo I look like Rudolph in. But, <laughs> but, um, but he would come in. He came in Valentine's Day, and the nurse said, oh, look who's here. And I said, who is that? <laughs> and he said, what do you mean? And I said, I have no idea who you are. Could you please leave my room? Oh and the nurse goodness. says, he's your husband. I said, no, I don't have a husband. <laughs> So, so he says, when I got out of the hospital and everything, he said, you so owe me. <laughs> so, but, and um, then the other thing was corresponding action. Yes. Um, your obedience is the lineup of every single thing. I'm just going to keep saying that because it's so true. But when you go through something like this, whether it's your marriage, whether it's financial, whether it's healing, whatever it is, you have got to continue doing what God's telling you to do. Yes. And there's, Amen. you know, you can say, and, and please don't, please don't take this wrong and please don't send hate mail. I'm not saying this in a, in a derogatory way, but you speaking the word is not the only piece of this puzzle. Right, because it takes corresponding action. James 2, 26 says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Yes. And then verse 18 in James 2 says, I can already hear, this is from the message, 
I can already hear one of you agreeing by saying, sounds good. Yes. You take care of the faith department. I'll handle the works department. <laughs> Not so fast. You can no more show me your works apart from your faith than I can show you my faith apart from my works. Yes. Faith and works, works and faith fit together hand in glove. Absolutely. And for somebody who's going through something like this, you know, for me, the changes were my diet, um, my, the things I did. Um, as far as physical activity, they had me walking a mile before I ever even went into surgery. Yeah. Um, now that I'm out of surgery, I spend three to five days in the gym. That's um, great. It's mandatory. It's not because I like it. Yeah. It's because I have to. Um, but even my diet to this point, um, you, know, I, it, you cannot expect God to move on your behalf if you keep shoving Twinkies in. Hello. It doesn't work that way. You know, I've told my kids their whole life, just because you sit in a car and you make all the noises and play with the steering wheel does not mean you're driving that car. Amen. And it's the same principle of faith. You have to, to launch yourself out there. You have to make that move. You have to do your part. God's already done his part. Amen. So. And then immersion. In, word, in the word and in worship. Let's talk about that because we've learned this from Brother Kenneth Copeland. Let's go back here. Put that on the screen, guys. Immersion in the word and worship. We learned this from Kenneth Copeland. He tells a story about when he was first learning the word of faith, he used the form of total immersion that they teach in learning a foreign language. Yes. He immersed himself in the word. Yes. And that is what you apply to this. Talk yes. about that. Um, you, uh, I'll tell you what, you better know the word before you get in a situation. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Amen. Because this is, you know, and sitting on the flip side of this my whole life, I've heard you say that, and I always thought, oh, of course you know the word, blah, blah, blah. But when you get in a moment like that, I'm telling you, that's the very first thing the devil attacks. And all of a sudden, you don't remember the word. <laughs> So you have to really make sure you know before you go in to uh, have a battle like that. And it, it, this was like a crazy double lung transplant. Um, but it's no different than applying it to your finances, your marriage, Every your children. Situation. You better know the word. You better have it in there. Because as much as you love me and you were there for me, praying for me, you could not save me. I could not. I, I wanted had, to. <laughs> I, I had to do that. That was what God was expecting from yeah. me. Yes. My part. Yes. So yes, Absolutely. you better know and, and immerse yourself because you never know when a moment like this is going to happen. I never thought that this was going to happen Oh, who to me. would have thought this for beautiful Liba, young and vibrant, and all of a sudden she's at death's door. And that's why we tell people, Sow the word into your heart. Yes. Sow the word. Hear the word. Speak the word. Be, be in church as often as you can yeah. get there. And then watch the Victory Network and, yes. and listen to the word all the time in your car, at the house, everywhere. Be saturated in yes. the word. Because the devil is a thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yes. And he doesn't play fair. That's right. And he attacks, and you better be full of the word yes. when the attack comes. And, and, and expounding on that, Pastor Cheryl, when I was in that sedation for the three weeks after, I wasn't able to speak. No. Um, I had a trach. Um, they had me shut down. Yeah. I was basically tied to that bed with all the medications and stuff. I wasn't leaving that bed. Right. I, I couldn't, like I said, even tell you who I was. And so at that moment, those are the kind of moments when you have to know what you believe. Exactly. Because in that, that moment of, of being not really... I'm so sorry. Okay. Not being with the program, so to speak, I had to be able to, in my subconscious, still be the word Your rotating. Your spirit. The, the, yes. Your spirit was my, full of faith. It had to rise up and be there. Because at that point, they didn't know if, the, if I was going to make it. Right. Still. And, and that was truly the hardest part of this entire journey, yeah. is those weeks after. And it so was. It I was. had to know what I believed right, right here in right. my spirit. And... And it did. It rose up. You know, there was a couple songs that just refreshed. Yeah. I would wake up to them, and that's all. I could only sing the verse, but I knew the verse. And Madison would play the guitar yep, she did. for you and sing to you. She did. Let's talk about now that God has brought you through this, the ministry opportunity that he's presented. Let's talk about that ministry opportunity. I have um, a monthly 
exams where I have to go in and they do a bronchoscopy and look at my lungs and make sure there's no rejection and praise God, I, five months and I have no rejection, I have no problems. Everything's, my doctors as a matter of fact say all the time, we don't know how to fix you, you're healing so beautifully. So, um, but um, I was in this last, well it was two months ago now, um, and had my annual get ready for my bronc and all that kind of good stuff. And my doctor, um, I usually do not see her before the procedure. I see her in the room and, and then they sedate me and we go from there. She came flying out of this room and she was stripping off her, um, her scrubs and everything. She said, I have a favor to ask of you. And I looked at her and I'm like, whatever you need. <laughs> I mean, are, are you kidding? Yes. And so um, she said that there is a patient that was a few doors down from me having the same procedure. Um, just a few weeks out of transplant, and he was ready to go home. He was having such a hard time. Yeah, he was ready to just give up. He, he just could not endure. And so she said, would you talk to him? And I said, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't get out of the bed fast enough. I was <laughs> tearing off the IV, and I was down the hall. And we got in there, and of course, because of COVID and um, because they bust your immune system down so far, I couldn't get near him because she didn't want us to share anything. <laughs> Um, so I stood at his feet and, and just the Lord just gave me the floor and I began to share of his goodness and all that he'd done for me and that God wanted this for him, that he was no respecter of persons. Yeah. What he did for me, he will do for you and he, that he loves him. And I, like I said, I just, just began to just pour into him and I completely forgot who was around me, who I was taught. I mean, I, it just went completely out of my head. The Lord just, it was such a God moment. And I look up at my doctor, and tears are streaming down her face. And um, I knew at that moment I was exactly where I was supposed to be. It was something that when I decided, yes, we were going to go ahead with the procedure, I'm like, Lord, this is my testimony. It's about me. It's about my family. But it is not for me. And so you bring the people to me, and I will open my mouth. I will be obedient, and I will share of your goodness what you've done for me. And so um, I turned around in the hallway, and all the nurses had lined up and were just tears, just falling. <laughs> and this one nurse says, that was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Aww. And it just, I, then I started to cry. And I get back in my room, and they start hooking me back up for the procedure and everything. And my doctor said, this has been on my heart. I've tried to start this um, group for over two years. And she said, I haven't found the right person to head it up until today. She said, will you partner with me, and will you go into the hospital, and will you minister to people? Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Glory well, Pastor Leva, we're getting ready to pray yeah. because I believe your testimony is going to set a lot of people free. They're receiving all this encouragement, and many, many people may have been at, at death's door, and God is going to do a miracle. Yes. So right now I'm going to invite your girls and Pastor Andrew to come up on stage, and we're going to pray together, all, right. all of them. Come on, girls, join me. One's behind the camera, and one was singing with me earlier. But uh, the girls are going to get on either side of you. Little Madison, get, it right, get right here, sweetheart. She's only 16 and singing like a 20-year-old. Proud of her. And Pastor Andrew's making his way because he's been back there in the media booth helping back there. We are a team here at Word of Faith. Amen. Everybody gets busy. Everybody's doing something. Everybody's Amen. working for Jesus, and we love what we do. Amen. And um, we're just going to pray. We're going to believe God for some miracles to take place. Amen. Amen. The Word, God says, He sent His Word and healed me, by whose stripes I was healed. Amen. Amen. Healing belongs to each and every one of us. Jesus gave his life that we might be healed and set free. And so we're going to pray right now. We're going to believe God for miracles and signs and wonders. And Pastor Andrew, I'm going to hand you the mic, and I'm going to ask you to lead us. And Liba, you, you just chime in, and let's just pray, and let's believe God. And I believe the camera one right here is going to be picking you guys up. So... Pastor Andrew, I'm going to hand the mic to you and just let's pray. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we've heard some good word today. Yes. And we see where the glory of God is in all of this. Amen. And this could be 
could be you watching yeah. on the TV screen or on your phone, in your car, wherever you're at. This is for you. Amen. This whole miracle has been for you. Amen. Not just for our family, but it's been for you. So if you wouldn't mind, just reach your hand out to the TV screen and yeah, we're just going to pray over you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just come before thank you right you. now for whoever's watching. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, <laughs> that you had them thank there at the right moment yes, to hear this word, hear this testimony of this young lady. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you. Thank you, Father. That they have the wisdom yes. to know what to do, and that is to believe your word. Yes, Father. To open thank your Bible. You, where it says in Exodus 14, 14, that he fights your battles for you. Yeah. You can't fight against the wind, but God fights the battles for you. Amen. And he gives you the victories. Yes. And we just come against any disease, any yes. virus against yes. in their bodies. That is the body of God's. It is God. It's Jesus paid the price for Amen. it. Thank you, Father. That is not your disease. Stop calling it my disease. Amen. Right. That is not your disease. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You have to get your mouth right. Hallelujah. You have to sow correct seeds. Yes. Use the word against it. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just come against anything that's going against their brains, their minds right now. Any fear. We come against fear. Hallelujah. Thank you. False evidence appearing real. That's what he wants. That's what Satan wants you to believe it but it's fear. You don't have to take fear. No. Use your faith. Amen. Father, we just thank you and we praise you for it. For those that have heard this word today, thank you. bless them, Father. Thank you. Align them with favor of who they need to speak yes. to thank you, Jesus. and what they need to hear. Holy Spirit, speak to each and every one of them. Show them there is a way. Show them there is a way. And we just thank you and we praise you for it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray, Pastor. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your glory, Father. We thank you for your showing up and showing out. Yes. Father, I thank you for the blessing that you've, you've done, performed in my body, and that you continue day by day to do. And Father, I thank you for these people. Lord, whoever it is, whoever needs this from you, Lord, I, I thank you that you are touching every piece of the puzzle because that's really what it is father that you're bringing the financial provision you are bringing the people you are bringing the right yes, timing the yes. right place the right yes. surgeons the right whatever they have need of father i just thank you i love the the scripture uh, philippians 4 6 in the message it says do not fret or worry stop worrying and pray <laughs> How easy is that? Yeah. So, Father, we just we thank you for these people. We bind fear and we bind every obstacle yes. that would that would jump in their way, that would discourage them, Father, along yes. the way. Yes. I command that to go in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for peace. Peace. The yes. peace that passes all understanding, <clears throat> that garrisons and mount guards over your heart and your mind. That's the kind of peace we need. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now listen, if God is speaking to you and you need a healing in your body, if God's done something in your body while we've prayed, we need you to write us. We're going to put an address and a phone number on the screen. You email us, write us, get a hold of us right now so yes. that we can get into agreement with you. We're going to stand with you through this. Amen. The devil is not going to kill you. Amen. Mm -hmm. You will live and, and not die. die. And you will declare, declare the works of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, Pastor Andrew, isn't this a beautiful family? Yeah. Yes. Glory to God. Yeah, amen. Let, give me camera one again. Uh, Zoe is finishing up her education at Oral Roberts University. This is... So we write down here. Madison is finishing high school uh, right here in Daytona Beach. She actually lives in Daytona. And Pastor Andrew is getting ready to go to Sturgis with yes. the Chariots of Light. Uh, Jerry Savelle's ministry, the Chariots of Light. Tell him what you're about to do. Uh, going up to Sturgis. I'm going to fly up and meet Bill and Ginger Horn. And then we're going to drive over from North Carolina to Sturgis. 
uh, which takes about four days because it's a long ways. Um, but once we get to Sturgis, we're going to set up and then we're going to go find good places. We call them fishing holes. Mm -hmm. Fishing holes are the best. It's where the people pool kind of swim around a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're a little stagnant. They don't want to go and see everything. They're not walking fast. But we're going to go win souls. Amen. Go on and win souls. And you can contribute to this. Uh, we like Pentecostal handshakes here. <laughs> but if you want to include it in the offering tonight, just say this is for Pastor Andrew and Sturgis. Chariots. Just the bike ministry. Whatever. Whatever you say. All of that will go toward Pastor Andrew's trip. Amen. Amen. And what a blessing God has done. Amen. And Pastor Andrew, you told me that out of all this, you guys are prospering. Oh, yes. Christ, yes. <laughs> yes. You see, when, when a medical issue comes on a family, it doesn't just affect your physical body. It affects everybody and your finances and everything. And the devil tried his best to take you guys out, and he is so defeated. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just love Jesus. Amen. 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 We'll give the Lord a great big praise, church. Hallelujah.